Hello, welcome to another video. Look at this integral. It is one of those um, MIT qualifying round questions, the ones you would do to be counted worthy of entering the computation, which simply means that it is not something impossible to solve or difficult to solve. It's just to um, brush up your integration skills. So everything about this integral is regular. It's just that you will have to know what to do every time you get to uh, the next stage. So let's get into this video without any other delay. But before we go on, please make sure you like this video, share it, share this video, share this channel. I do appreciate those of you who are subscribed, but I think um, there's so many more people who watch my videos who are not subscribed, who do not like the videos, I mean, who like the videos, but don't show that they like the video by just liking the videos. And there's some who are just not subscribed. Please help me. Let's get into this video. Just looking at the problem, you see that we have a polynomial in the denominator and every time there's a polynomial in the denominator you pray it is a quadratic because if it's a quadratic you can do completing the squares and then you just have an answer by using your trig substitution but this is not a quadratic this is a cubic function and with a cubic function you can do completing the squares so you pray that you can factor so you can have at least or at most two terms in the denominator so can we factor it looks like we can factor because i have one minus x here and if i pair this and i pull out x squared i think i can get an answer and so let's just see where that leads us because there's no other way um, for us to attack this so we're going to say that this is equal to the integral of dx over if i factor this i'm going to have one minus x times if i take out x squared it's going to be plus x squared into one minus x you see that so this clearly becomes the integral of dx over if i take out one minus x the second part is going to be one plus x squared now if you don't understand how this was factored you need to do some review of your algebra or pre-calculus. So that's the factor form of this integral. Now, what does this mean? It means we have two integrals. We cannot do u substitution. We cannot do integration by parts. Or maybe we could do integration by parts. I am not sure, but that looks very um, not likely. Okay, um, it's not going to work. So you have to then rewrite this as two different fractions. So this has to be the integral of two fractions. It's going to be a over one minus x plus bx plus c over one plus x squared, because this is an irreducible quadratic. So you have to do this and then you can integrate with respect to x. So this is partial fraction decomposition. That is the only way this is gonna go. So our job now is just to find what the values of A, B, and C would be. Now I'm gonna do the work and erase it because I don't wanna take up board space, but let's find out what A, B, and C would be, and then we we'll solve it. So let's do our partial fraction decomposition. So the first thing you wanna look at is the LCD, this is what I have as my LCD, it's just the product of this and this. So you're gonna take that and use it to multiply every term here. Well, if you take the product of these two and use it to multiply this, well, this product is this. Remember, we factor this into these two, so that's gonna cancel the denominator, you have just one here. Now, if you use these two to multiply this, this will get rid of itself and then you have this times this so that's going to be a times one plus x squared and then plus you're going to have this times this which is going to be um, bx plus c multiplied by one minus x so this is what we have for our partial fraction decomposition so how do you start solving 
You want to be as smart as possible. For me, every time there's a linear portion, this portion, I'm just going to substitute a smart number, which will get rid of this. So I know that when x is 1, 1 minus 1 gives me 0, and everything here becomes 0. So I'm just going to say when x equals 1, well, this is a constant. It doesn't depend on x, so it stays as 1. But what happens is this becomes 0 because it would be 1 minus 1, that's 0 times this is 0, and then I plug in 1 here, 1 plus 1 is 2, so a times 2 is going to give me 2a. Clearly, if 2a equals 1, it means this implies that a is equal to 1 half. So I've gotten one of my answers. The next smart thing you want to do is look at the coefficients that are unique. Okay, I know that this is going to have x squared, and this also is going to have x squared when you expand it. But the only term that will contain x squared here will be b, because b has an x. So bx times minus x will be minus bx squared. So you come here, well, there is no x squared term here, so there's a 0 representing x squared. So here you have 0x squared, but from here you're going to have ax squared, and from here you're going to have minus bx squared. Clearly, this is 0. So if you put this here, you're going to have bx squared equals ax squared, which implies a is equal to b. Well, oh, we already found b. We already found a to be 1 half. That means b also is 1 half. a equals b equals 1 half. We found two of the letters. Let's go get the third one. What should we do? You know what I would do? I'll work with the constants. There's a constant here. It's 1. If I do this expansion, I am sure that this is going to give me a times 1, so a is going to be a constant. If I do this expansion, I know that b is not going to be a constant. But c is going to be a constant, because c times 1 will give me c, and nothing else is going to be a constant, so I'm going to say plus c. So if a plus c equals 1, it simply implies that c is 1 minus a, which is 1 minus 1 half, which is equal to 1 half. So it means a equals 1 half, b equals 1 half, and c equals 1 half. Beautiful. So I'm going to erase all of this, and I'm going to rewrite this here as this is equal to the integral of 1 half over 1 minus x plus 1 half of x plus 1 half over 1 plus x squared, all integrated with respect to x. So at this point, all we have to do is rewrite this in simplified manner because we're almost done actually. Everything looks juicy at this point. So we're going to say dx. Now see how simple this becomes. This is going to be, I'm going to pull out the 1 half. So I have 1 half of the integral of 1 over 1 minus x dx. Plus, I'm going to pull out this 1 half again, plus 1 half of the integral of x plus 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. I must tell you that the first time I got to this, I started thinking, how oh, u substitution doesn't work. Actually, u substitution does not work in this case because the derivative of 1 plus x squared is 2x, but we need x plus 1. So don't use u substitution yet. You're still going to use it, but not now. So we have to break this further down so that Remember that whenever you have a linear expression in the numerator, you can split it into two different um, uh, integrals. So here, we're going to have this is equal to 1 half of the integral of 1 over 1 minus x dx plus 1 half. Now I'm going to split this into the integral of x over 1 plus x squared dx plus 1 half of the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Now I can integrate everything I want to integrate. Now, 
This one does not require any extra step. This one still requires U substitution because you have to make the denominator your U. Let's just do that right here. If we say let U be equal to one plus X squared, then we know that DU equals two X DX, but we need just X DX. So we have to say half DU is equal to X DX. So that when you go back to substitute, you just replace this with half du, but that half comes to the back and becomes half times one half, okay? So with this u substitution, this is gonna become one half of the integral of, this is just gonna be du over u, but this is gonna be half du has replaced x dx, and this is your u, but this half can come back here and become one over four. So I'm going to rewrite this as one over four, and I leave this as du over u. Now we're good. Okay, let's just fill the rest up. This is one half of the integral of one over one plus x squared dx, and this is gonna be equal to one half of the integral of one over one minus x dx. Okay, let's write our answers. One half times the natural log of this function, which is one minus x, times the derivative of the inside, I mean divided by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of this is minus one. So if you divide this by minus one, you get a minus. This is a skill you should remember to use, okay? Plus, let's go here. Well, this is gonna be the natural log of u, so it's one over four times the natural log of u, but when we did our substitution, u was one plus x squared, so it's gonna be one plus x squared, okay? This should be with absolute value bars, okay? MIT says you don't have to do it, but we're gonna do it just for the generality of the human race, okay? So here, this is always positive, so I don't need to put absolute value bars. This can never be negative. And then we go here, plus, this also can never be negative. But we know that this is the anti, this is the derivative of arctan. So if we integrate it, it gives us arctan x. So it's one half of arctan x. Okay, here is the favorite part of it, plus c. And... I think that's what we get. Now we can clean this up because this has one half. This could have one half. If we take one half here and it becomes the square root and this can become, this can be the way it is. Let's factor out one half and I'm gonna put, um, which one goes first? I'm gonna put this one first. So let's write it up. This is equal to um, one half factor out arctan x and let's deal with this one first, okay? This is gonna be plus, I'm gonna say the natural log of the square root of one plus x squared. So what I've done is I've split this one fourth into one half times one half. I pulled out one of the one halves and I made the other one half the square root of this. And for this one, the one half is already in the back here, so I just need the minus natural log of one minus x. And I have my plus C, the highly demanded plus C. And there is the answer to this integral. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.